wisdom and knowledge in your midst this day, saith the Spirit of God. I, the Holy Ghost, your teacher, am here to make things known unto thee. Yea, I shall open up deep and hidden things unto thee this day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt surely look into a new realm of wisdom and enlightenment, saith God. So set thyself down before my feet this day and allow me to place my hands upon thy ears for a new level and a new realm of blessing is thine today, for I am calling you unto my side where I shall teach thee and shall show thee things to come, saith the Lord.
And we'll feel like we're a victim to that. And we'll feel like we have to come under that. But, you know, Paul was writing in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 in verse 3. He said, though, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Right. We don't do things the way that the world does it. We just don't operate in that way. The operation of the kingdom of God is not like the operation of the kingdoms of this world. That's why that he came to translate us, completely remove us, yeah. out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, because you can't live with one foot in it and one foot That's in the kingdom of God. You can't try to, you can't call yourself a son of God and then try to operate by the world's principles because it just won't work. The two don't mix. James said bitter and sweet can't mix together. Jesus said you can't serve two masters. It's just impossible. You're going to find that you're going to love the one and hate the other. You're going to find out that it's impossible for you to please them both. You just can't do it. And you can't fight your warfare half in the natural and half in the spirit. We can't do it all natural all week long and then come in here and have a little spirit on Sunday and then go back out and try to do it all in the natural again. It just doesn't work. You wind up having a very chaotic life. And, and the reason that it's chaotic, you know, is not even so much it's not God doing it to you. It's not the devil doing it to you. It is what's on the inside of you is manifesting. Inside, there is chaos, and you are seeing it manifest on the outside. That's all that's happening. So then in verse 4, he said, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And, you know, that's no small deed. Because if you think of all the crazy things that go through our head in just an hour's worth of time. Oh, yeah. Now, all this is done by the Spirit. It's done by grace. So no one is expecting you to do this and you to get control over this. But what the words, you know, um, what the Word says, though, is that you have to cast them down. In other words, you can't give them a place of prominence in your life. When something comes, uh, even a thought comes through, and it is, it says there that it uh, exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So even in the small things, you know, well, what we think of anyways as small things. Now, as you go deeper and deeper into Christ, He starts pruning and pruning more of those things that yeah. you think are small. That's right. So you know, to a baby believer that that has lived out in the world for a very long time getting free of alcoholism or getting free of whatever they're dealing with at what they did out in the world is a big deal. Yeah. But after you've been in church and you hadn't had a drink in 30 years, the Lord's not going to come and deal with you on that. But He may come and deal with you on your mouth yeah. or your feelings of jealousy sure. or your feelings of unworthiness that no matter how many times we get up in here and tell you that you're a son of God, a child of God. Right. You still think of yourself as this low level that's right. never going to rise right. up and be anything. He'll come in and he'll start to take away even those little things. Why? Because the little foxes destroy the vine. Sure. Because sometimes we're sitting around wondering why it's not working. And we don't realize that it can even be just a small thing such as the words that are coming out of our mouth every day. And those words come from our thoughts. Jesus said, as a man thinketh in his heart. So is he. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. So that's why it's important to take these thoughts into captivity. So even in those thoughts, you know, if Jesus said by, by, that by his stripes we have been healed and a thought comes through our mind, I don't feel good, we have to cast that down. Yeah. We have to cast it down then. Not cast it down later when we're sick as a dog and then we finally yeah. call for the elders of the church to come lay hands on us because we can't take it anymore. But from the very get-go, from the first little thing, we have to start casting it down. Yeah. And say, no, that's not the truth about me. That's not the truth about who I am. It's not the truth about the kingdom of God. And continually do that. And then it's the finally he says, and having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Um, you want to know what the revenge for disobedience is? 
your obedience being fulfilled. Right. It's not God pulling out judgment on everybody. It's not you getting what you deserve. See, the thing about judgment is we want it for everybody but ourselves. So if, you know, so-and-so down the street hits our car, we want judgment. Yeah, right. He better pay for this. Yeah. We're going to call the cops if he don't yeah. offer to pay for it. We, we, we want it judged. But we don't want judgment on ourselves. Right. We mess up. Lord, forgive us. Right. Lord, help us. So we have to, whatever mercy we expect for ourselves, we have to extend that mercy to others. Right. And, and that doesn't mean that somebody's right for doing you wrong. It doesn't make their wrong a right. But, you know, you getting upset about it and being ugly of it, that don't, that don't get the car fixed. That's right. And you having a meltdown don't get the car fixed. And, and you know, you fighting with this person doesn't get the car fixed. Right. But if you go to God and say, you know, what, what did the disciples say? Anytime somebody wronged them or did them wrong, they said, Lord, behold, look at what's going on. And that's all you have to do. He already sees it, but he said, Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. Right. So just take it to him and say, Lord, you see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. And you can, you, know, you, you can do what I can't do. Mm -hmm. You can change hearts. Uh, you can bring right. money to me that I can get it fixed myself and not even have to deal with the stress of the situation. Uh -huh. You can do the things that I can't do. Uh -huh. And you have to give it over to him because your weapons are not carnal. That's right. Your weapons are not about getting in a fight with someone. Yeah. Your weapons are not about those things. Your weapons, you know, crying don't change it. Fighting don't change it. If you think that you're going to fight to get your way, what happens? Jesus said if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. And we may not be carrying swords around these days, but if you live by evil words, all they do is stir up more strife and evil words. It doesn't make the situation better. And, and most of the time, you don't prove your point to the person either. No, I agree. 99% of the time, just because you told them off and told them what was on your mind, yeah. does not mean they're going to change their mind and go, no, you know no. what, I agree with you. That's right. <laughs> it usually just stirs up more and more strife, and it continues on. And we have, you know, so how do we cast down the strongholds that try to get in our mind? Because, you know, sometimes there are some things that, yes, maybe we let it in, and then there are some things that we're nearly taught from birth. I mean, from birth, they are checking to see what's wrong with the baby. That's right. Even if nothing looks wrong with the baby, they want to do 5,000 tests oh, yeah. to make sure there's nothing wrong with the baby. And that comes from birth. From, from the time they're born, somebody's telling you how to take care of them. Yeah. Even in the hospital. They're telling you how, how you know, can, if they can have a pacifier or not. It, you know, how you're supposed to change their diaper. Yeah. What kind of clothes you're supposed to put on them. Why? Because it's just this fear-based mentality that you're somehow going to do something wrong right. and mess up this poor little baby instead of having a life mentality right. that God will give you wisdom in how to do this and that you, you have the wisdom of God in you. You know, you have the wisdom of God in you. And some things that we do, we do them very naturally because the Lord put that within us. And if we just listen to that wisdom instead of getting caught up in all the nonsense that everyone tries to put towards us, because you can find 5,000 views on any opinion. All you've got to do is Google it and look it up online, and everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> and if you're talking about the world of science, everybody's got some sort of research they claim to back it up. Even though their research, you know, one's research and it came out this way, and the other researched it and said it didn't come out that way. And you can't go by all those things. You have to let the wisdom of God lead you. And there's many ways that we can pull down strongholds. One is the Word of God. Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. You won't have faith to believe who God is, what He's about, why He puts you on this earth if you don't get in the Word. And that's not just this word because there are some people in this planet who don't have access to this word written in front of them or don't have access to learning how to read. It is also the rhema word that when you go and you spend time alone with God and he speaks to your spirit, that you can build your faith off of that rhema word. Amen. 
That's why we say that you always need a word from God about your situation. Because right. you can't have faith for it if you don't have a word for it. And he may give you scriptures to stand on. He may give you a prophecy that someone up here gives you to stand on. He may speak to your just your inner man during prayer time and tell you that everything is going to be okay. And sometimes that is the only thing he says. Yes. And we want A, B, C, D, E, F, G for him to spell it out for us. But sometimes he doesn't. Right. Well, sometimes it is just stand still and see the salvation of the Lord today. Yes. I've got this taken care of and right. you just need to stop worrying about it. And stop fussing and fretting about it because right. I've got it taken care of. Yeah. If I need your help, I'll tell you. <laughs> and sometimes that's our answer. And we have to stand on that, that everything is going to be okay. I don't know how it's going to be okay. I don't know when it when it's going to manifest in the natural. Right. I don't know wh where it's coming from. But God said everything was going to be okay, so I'm going to stand on that. Yes. And I'm not going to worry today, and I'm not going to fret today, and I'm going to go ahead and enjoy myself today because the Lord already told me this is going to be okay. And that's one way he pulls down a stronghold. Another one is prayer time. It, it, you know, a prayer life is a powerful life. Yes. Because you know things, you hear things, you, right. you, God reveals things to you ahead of time. Even things that um, we think you know, he, he reveals small things to us going on in our lives or somebody else's life. But sometimes he reveals things to you. You know, you could know who's going to win the presidency. Yep. You can know all kinds of things. Right. Just because he tells you about it. That's right. And, and, and he takes pleasure in that. Yeah. Sometimes we kind of forget, you know, we're, we're sitting back begging for God to speak to us. And we forget that, A, he never stopped speaking to begin with. He's always speaking. The Spirit's always moving. There's no end to that. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't slumber. He never stops. And then the other side to that is we forget that he actually enjoys it. He enjoys spending time with his people. He enjoys revealing things to people. When Matt spoke about Abraham, when, when he came to see Abraham and he told him, you know, that this time next year, yeah. you and Sarah are going to have a son. They also said, are we going to withhold this from Abraham, what we're about to do right. with Sodom and Gomorrah? Right. Why? Because Abraham was his friend. That's right. And he wanted to speak to him. Yes. You know, uh, it says that with Moses, that Moses spoke to God like a friend face to face. That he enjoyed that time with him. So it is not, you know, communion is not just... You're not just getting something out of it. He takes pleasure in the presence of his people. He takes joy in that. Yes, he, does. he enjoys it. And then the one that I really wanted to get to today and focus on today was worship. Worship pulls down strongholds. Worship pulls down strongholds in your mind. And it, what it does is it's basically you are acknowledging that God is all in all. It's you acknowledging that there is no power other than him. He would tell the Israelites often, I am God and there is none beside me. Because they had so many other people around them worshiping other gods. And they were tempted to worship other gods. And we don't feel like we worship other gods often because we don't have a statue in front of us. But anytime you are fearing something, worrying about something, giving it all of your attention and your thought life. Hallelujah. Pouring all your money and time into it, you are worshiping it. Right. You are saying that it has power. Yes. You're, you're, that, that's basically what you're saying, that it has a power and you need to sit around and think about it and try to appease it. Just like they try, you know, they, a lot of those gods they worship, they didn't worship them because they were so in love with them. They worshiped them because they feared them. All right. Because someone told them that God might hurt them. If they didn't do what he said. If they didn't bring the sacrifice. And I wanted to read from you in Psalms 103. David writes this. He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And sometimes you have to tell your soul what it's going to do today. And you have to tell it, it will bless the Lord. Whether it feels like blessing the Lord or not. Whether all hell has broken loose or not. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul. I'm going to keep on blessing. No matter what happens, I will bless the Lord, oh my soul. 
that the, your soul, you have to tell it, it has to get in line with your spirit man. And it's especially important when everything goes crazy. Yes. Because you will be very tempted to get over into the emotional realm and to let that take over. And you have to say, no, I will bless the Lord on my soul. And it says in verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. We have to remind ourselves of just who he is. Yes. And that he is not only, he's a rewarder. Yes. He has benefits. We aren't just here serving this God because we're scared that if we don't, we're going to go to hell one day. Right, right. We serve him because we love him. Yes. We serve him because we know he's full of benefits. Amen. We serve him because he know, we know that it's for our good yes. and not for our evil. It says, who forgiveth all thy iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, not just a couple and not just sometimes and not just the big ones, but not the small ones you have to live with. Right. Not just the ones that you can take medicine for. Right. But all your diseases, anything Amen. that causes you dis-ease. Yeah. And that is everything from cancer to your little pinky toe hurting. Anything that can cause you dis-ease, yeah. he heals it. He's the first one we have to look to. And he may send us to other places. He may tell us a doctor to go to. Or he may say that he's got this. But we have to look to him first. And many times we just don't look to him first. We look everywhere else first. And then when that all fails, we turn to God. Now the wonderful thing about God is he is forever married to the backslider. Yes, I don't care. And his mercy, it knows no end and no bounds. And I don't care how many times you mess up. The minute you come to him, he just like that forgives. Yes. He just like that wipes out not just the iniquity, but the consequence of the That's iniquity. Right. David, I didn't have it written down to read, but later on he's going to say that he doesn't deal with us after our sin. See, a lot of us believe God forgives, but we believe the judgment still comes. Right. That's a big thing in the church world. Sure. You know, he'll forgive you for going crazy with your finances, but now you're going to have to pull yourself out of it, and it may take seven years. Yeah. But at least God forgave you. Yeah, oh you're going to have to suffer for the next seven years, but at least he forgave you. Yeah. And that's not what David said. He said he doesn't deal with us after our sins, and he doesn't reward us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So it's all removed, including all the penalties. So we got to stop having a mindset full of penalties. Because there is no penalty anymore. We've been forgiven. And once forgiven, always forgiven. Yes, Lord. That's just the way he works. He doesn't leave you. He doesn't forsake you. That's right. Many of people have run off from him. But in Revelation, it said, that, you know, if, you, if you've if you left your first love, just go back to him. Hallelujah. Just return unto him. Because yes. he hasn't gone anywhere. Right. And But then in verse um, 4, it says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Yes. So you don't have to worry anymore about accidents and danger. And all of those things. Now, I, he will give you wisdom if there's somewhere that you're not supposed to go. Or something that you're not supposed to do. But we no longer have to live in fear that just any old thing can come upon us. Because it can. As long as we're listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he will lead and direct our paths. And even if danger tries to come our way, it won't be able to kill us. It just won't. It won't be able to take you out. Jesus said, you can't take my life from me. That's right. If I don't lay it down, you can't have it. Yeah. And, we, and whether or not we believe it, we are the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Life can't be taken from us. Yeah. We have to choose to lay it down. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, we make that choice. Un we, we don't realize we're making a choice. And we don't realize that what we're saying you know, some people just live in fear of accidents or just believe that accidents happen. Right. These things just happen. Yeah. And so if you, that's your mindset, then you've opened the door for it to happen to sure, you yeah. simply because your words and your mindset line up with that could possibly happen. Right. But, you know, shut the door. Yes. If you'll shut the door yes. and say, look, I'm, I'm not an accident waiting to happen. 
They can come at me, a thousand may fall at my side, and ten thousand may fall at my right hand, but it can't come by my dwelling place. I have authority over these things. I have protection around me. My angels are always with me. Jesus is forever making an intercession for me. And I don't have to worry that something bad is going to happen to me all the time or happen to my children all the time. Because if I've prayed the prayer of faith over them, faith does its job. Amen. It does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Then it says, Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. We already talked about that. His mercy endureth forever yeah. and ever and ever. And when you think you messed up the worst, His mercy still endures. And when you think that somebody in your family has messed up the worst, His mercy still endures. Yeah. It endures forever. Who satisfies thy mouth with good things. Right. So that takes out any lack or anything that we yes, walk around amen. saying we need this, I don't have that, I don't have this, I wish I had that. No, he satisfies your mouth with good. good. He satisfies it. Yes, you don't have to satisfy it. Your husband doesn't have to satisfy it. Nobody else has to satisfy it. The government doesn't have to satisfy it. He will satisfy it. Yes, now, he may use your job. He may use the government. He may use your spouse. He may use whoever. And he is able to use whoever he needs to use. Yes. But never forget, it's he who satisfies it. Yes. And you can't look to anybody else because they may fail. Right. That's right. But he can't fail. Amen. He, doesn't know, he doesn't know any lack. Yes. There's no lack in him. Yes. He needs something, he simply yes. creates it. Right. And if you need something, he can simply create it. Yes. There are times that he, he sent it through people. The Bible talks about when Jesus was in his ministry, there were women that provided for his ministry right. and supported his ministry. But there were times that money just showed up in the fish's mouth. That's right. And there were times when they only had this amount of food, but somehow it fed a multitude of people yes. and multiplied. So if he needs it, he can create. Yes. He's not stuck in a box. We're stuck in a rut and in a box, and we're looking to a paycheck that comes in on a, whatever, whenever your paycheck comes in. He's not stuck in that. Amen. He's able to do whatever he needs to do. Even to the point, um, we recently, I told Dwayne about this, I uh, heard a testimony. These, um, this farmer decided he, he was, you know, of course, serving the Lord and had been praying over these things, but he decided he wanted to pay off the rest of his land that he owned. He wanted to be debt free of it. And so he was believing for that, and he told his wife, he said, call up the bank and find out exactly how much we owe left on it so I'll know what we're supposed to be believing for. And when she called up the bank, the bank kept, they, they kept kind of giving her the roundabout and saying, well, we'll have to look into that. Um, you know, we'll give you a call back because we don't have the exact numbers in front of us. So in about a week later or so, she called back again. Finally, they put her in touch with the executive of the bank because they couldn't find their loan. Or any record of her loan. And she said, well, if you don't have a record of my loan, that means I don't owe you any money, right? And she's, and the manager said, well, I guess, I guess not. And it was just gone. Just like that. And that's why I said that God's not tied down to our methods. That's right. He can do it any way he pleases yes, to do it. Yes, yes. It's all for his glory anyways. He's not doing it for our glory. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with working. But if, it doesn't give God glory for you to say, I worked super hard, and I saved all my pennies, and I didn't go nowhere and do nothing so that I could get out of debt. Well, what, what glory does he get in that? Right. That gives you glory, but it doesn't yeah, give him right. any glory. Yeah, that's right. He wants some glory in it. Yeah. He wants to have his hand in it so that people will magnify his name. It's not just about us getting our name magnified. That's right. And besides all that, he can do exceeding abundantly above anything above, we ask or yeah, think. Indeed. So all we're thinking is getting our bills paid, and he's thinking you could fund the whole church if you just let me get involved in your finances. So we have to let him be the one that satisfies us. Yes. And then it says, so that thy youth is renewed That's like the right. eagles. Yes. So there's no more of this, I'm too old for this, excuses. Amen. They go out the window. And, and the truth be told, they were out the window a long time ago because in the Old Testament, Caleb got up at 85 and said, yes. I'm just as strong as I was 40 years ago, Amen. so you need to give me my mountain. Yes. Yes. 
God promised it to me. Yeah. He brought me here, and I'm going to go get my mountain. Now and that's is. what he told Joshua, and Joshua said, go get it. Yeah. Yeah. And he did. So even back in those days before Christ, they had a revelation that God would keep them till the end. Even Aaron, he couldn't even die until they took the ephod off That's of him. Right. Until the anointing came off of them, it just kept his body going yes. and going and going because yes. he had a job to do. And unless they took that off right. and released him of that job, That's his right. body kept doing what it needed to do yes. to get the job done. Amen. And unless the Lord has given you permission to go home, That's right. And he does. I mean, people do get permission to go home. There's nothing wrong with that. But if he hasn't given you that permission yet, then you should still be doing the works of the Father. Amen. Whatever that work he's asked you to do, you should have the strength to do it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Nobody should have to die sick and feeble and That's not right. feeling well and Amen. wish, and, you know. None of that should be. It should be that we have a choice, and when we hear the Holy Spirit say, it's time to come over and yes. cross over, yes. we simply just cross over. Amen. We say goodbye to our family. We tell them we love them. And there shouldn't be all this sorrow and sadness to it. Because we've done it the right way. And then I wanted to go into... I wanted to read one more verse to you before I went to somewhere else. In verse 19 of that same chapter. It says, The Lord hath prepared His throne in the heavens, and His kingdom ruleth over all. If we could ever just, you know, any... That's really the thought that you need to put in place for every single thought that comes against God. Because every thought that comes against God is trying to say He doesn't rule over all. Yeah. Right. That's all it's trying to tell you is that God doesn't rule over this situation. Yeah. And you have to set up that thought and say, no, He's established His throne in the heavens and His kingdom ruleth over all. And I claim that, but I'm a little bit like... Uh, Kelly Varner about that. I claim it both in the natural and the that spiritual. spiritual yeah. I claim it over this earth when everything looks like it's going haywire. No, the Lord has set His throne in the heavens. Yeah. And His kingdom ruleth over all. It ruleth over even all those people that think that they're... You know, it says another place in the Psalms, it says that He laughs. Yes. When the nations are carrying That's on and doing all these things, He already knows what He has planned. Yeah. And it don't bother Him at all yeah. for the heathen to rage. Because He knows what He's planned. But I also claim it in my own life and in my own territory that in these heavens the Lord has established yes, His love. And His kingdom ruleth over all that goes on. It ruleth over it all. And I set that up so that when things try to come my way I can say no. That's not a part of God's kingdom and if it's not a part of His kingdom it just can't be here. That's right. He sets the rules. Yes. He sets the tone. Hallelujah to God. And you know... Um, once you do that, the thing about worship and blessing the Lord, remembering all those benefits, you can't worry and fret while you do it. Yeah. It kicks it out. Yeah. Now, you may have to start, like I said, you have to tell your soul sometimes to bless them because sometimes you don't feel like blessing. Right. Sometimes it feels like everything but blessing. Right. Sometimes you just want to go sit down and cry. Yeah. Well. Sometimes you just want to veg out. Yeah. You know, turn on a movie and just forget about everything right. that is going on in your life yeah. right now. Or get in a novel if you're like me and you like to read, yeah. you know, and just forget yeah. about yeah. reality yeah. for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what you feel like doing. And there's nothing wrong with having a time to enjoy yourself. But, you know, some people are so caught up in that, oh, they don't ever find time to bless the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And so they don't deal with it. It's the same as being addicted to alcohol so you don't have to deal with your reality or anything else. It's just numb in the pain yeah. so that you don't have to deal with it. But you have to make a place to say, I'm going to bless the Lord. And as you do it, you know, as you do it, it may feel like in your flesh it's hard at first. But if you'll continue to do it, it won't be too long before the Holy Spirit takes over. And it won't be any more a struggle. Or anything like that. Because he'll break through. And then that's when the worrying stops. Right. And the fretting stops. And all those things just stop. Because you just can't do both at the same time. It becomes impossible. And there's a very familiar story in these last few minutes here. We've all heard it. But it is the story to go to. If you want to talk about praise and worship. And how it delivers you. It's in Second Chronicles chapter 20. The story of Jehoshaphat. Right. And Jehoshaphat had enemies that decided to come against him, and it was about three of them. 
all decided to come against him at one time in hopes of defeating him. And they didn't in the natural know what they were going to do because in the natural they didn't have a big enough army to defeat this army. And it looked bad in the natural. And so it said that without reading the whole entire thing, it says that, you know, the first thing he did was he called everybody together and told them to fast and pray. And sometimes you have to do that. That's another way to cast down a stronghold. If you find yourself not being able to find that place of comfort, that place of rest, fasting helps that. Fasting is not for God. God doesn't change his mind because you fast. He doesn't intervene because you fast. He's already gone to the cross and done everything that he needed to do. The work is finished. Yeah. Fasting is for us. Yeah. When our spirit man needs to be revived, when our flesh needs to be put under because our soul is listening too much to that instead of to our spirit, it helps us out. It puts us in a place where we're able to hear and hear clearly. And so that's what he asked him to do. And then he, like I said, you have, you have not because you ask not. He told the Lord, you see what's happening here. And he also reminded him, remember, forget not all of his benefits. He reminded him, you said in your word, you said when, uh, when Solomon prayed, remember his prayer, he said, if any man will turn, will turn back towards this temple, towards you, God, and pray, I don't care what's going on, whether it's famine, whether it's war, whatever has happened, if we turn back and pray, will you heal the land for their sake? And that's what Jehoshaphat reminded him of. He said, you, you know, you said that if we would turn towards you and pray to you, that you would help us. And he reminded him of that. And, and all the people started to pray for this. And what happened was the Holy Ghost got on a guy named Jehaziel. Yeah. And he stands up and he tells him, don't be afraid. Because you're not even going to have to fight in this wow. battle. Don't be afraid about this because it's not even going to require a fight from you. And I want to start reading in verse 20. It says, And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall you prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. And to say, praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. So they sent out the praisers first. And that's what we have to do. We have to send our praises up before we send our complaints up, before we send all of our tears up, before we just have a, just a total meltdown. What we need to do is get the praisers out and let them be the one that, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, to send up the praises. And you might look a little strange sometimes. I'm sure it looks a little strange to be going to battle and you've got a bunch of people on the front line rejoicing and praising and singing and playing their instruments instead of having your men of war on the front line. And sometimes you're going to look strange to other people when you're rejoicing and praising and singing when to them it looks like you should be crying. When to them it looks like that you should be angry and upset. When to them it looks like you should be falling apart and instead you start singing and praising and, and giving him all the glory because you know that this thing cannot hurt you. That he's got it. You may look strange to people. But I guarantee you one thing, they won't forget it. Amen. You know, we always tell a story of how we, if we ever have someone that is in the hospital or anything that we have to do, we kind of take over the area, especially if it's life or death. We take over, and at that point, we don't care how loud we pray, and we don't care if you hear us speaking in tongues. And there's many a people that have walked into a waiting room and walked right back out because we were in there. Praying, speaking in tongues, doing all the things that we know need to be done because that's more important than how we look in that moment. And so you have to get over, well, you should feel this way. And people may not like it when they think that you should be upset and you're praising and worshiping anyways. They might think you don't care, but what they don't know is that you've learned the secret. The secret to you, would you rather me worry about this with you or would you rather me get you the answer? 
and we all would rather have the answer, right? And then it goes on to say, And then when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy the other. They didn't have to get involved at all. God let them destroy themselves. And that's exactly what we need to let him do. Let him have the way. He can destroy cancer without our help. He can destroy heart disease, high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, whatever you name, he can destroy it and make it like it was never even there as an enemy. And make it totally gone, not just a little bit gone, a little better. We have to get over that, make it a little better for us mentality and get into, no, we want our enemy to be totally destroyed that they can't come against us again. And then it said, And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. That's exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Sometimes we are, you know, we're so desperate that we're just willing to get out of a situation and scrape by by the skin of our teeth, they say, when really we should be looking that God's going to be so good in this situation that it's going to be exceeding abundantly above anything that we can ask or think. And he's going to not just, you know, in this case it was riches and it may be riches that we need. Sometimes we need money for certain things. Uh, but it could be your health. Don't just settle for, we'll heal this, but I don't, you know, I still have to deal with this. No, he can heal the whole body from head to foot so that you have nothing left to have to quote unquote deal with. So you don't have to take any more medication. So that you don't have to go into the doctor every week or every couple of months or whatever. And they'll miss you when you're gone. Yeah. They will. If you if you don't go see them and, and you finally go in, we, we take our kids in for a yearly checkup, and they very rarely have to ever go for anything in between. And they'll say, well, you haven't been here in a year. No, I haven't. I haven't needed to be here. I'm only here now because the government requires me to get shots. Wow. That's the only reason Damn. I'm here now. They're fine. <laughs> you know. But he can do that to where it doesn't have to be this constant thing in our lives. He can make it a total total deliverance. And that's what they received was not only a total deliverance from their enemies, but then they got spoiled at the end of it. And then it says that on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Barakah, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore the name of the same place was called the valley of Barakah unto this day. And they returned every man unto of Judah and Jerusalem, and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies, and they came to Jerusalem with psalteries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And so what I wrote down was they praised him before the battle, because if you read it, before they ever went out to battle, the Levites got out their instruments and started praising. And the Lord even had told them where to go. If you read the whole entire chapter, he gave them super divine revelation, a word of wisdom of which way those armies were coming up oh, and, which, yeah. and where to even go to meet them. Then they praised them during it. That's the first thing they sent out with their praisers. And it says as soon as they sent out those praisers, what happened? The Lord sent, set ambushments against them. All right. And then they praised them after the battle. Amen. They didn't just stop there. Amen. They went home and they praised some more. Why? Because that's the weapons of our warfare. Yes. That is how we win. Yes. We have to keep a praising attitude. We have to keep an attitude of worship. We can't let anything else set up itself <laughs> against our God and say that it's bigger. Isn't that what upset David? Yes. That's what got David so upset. He said, I, how dare this Philistine defile the God of Israel? How are y'all going to sit back and let somebody say that God's, that he's bigger than God? And some of us, that's how we need to get. We need to start lifting up our God higher than all the situations that we're in and higher than our circumstances Hallelujah. and letting Him do what He'll do because He'll take care of it totally if we'll just let Him. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Bye.